Welcome to OCP TV, the newsroom for the Open Compute Project Foundation. I'm Laura Noland at the 2020 OCP Virtual Summit. Joining me today is Scott Stetzer, part of the Memory and Storage Strategy Division at Keok Show. Welcome to OCP TV, Scott. Hi, Laura, and thank you. I'm really happy to be here. Glad you're with us. If you could, start off by telling our viewers about Kyoksha and what you do at Kyoksha. Yeah, uh, so Kyoksha was formerly Toshiba Memory Corporation of America, uh, so it's uh, Kyoksha America, uh, and we're the, one of the largest flash vendors out in the uh, world today. I myself, I'm part of the Memory and Storage Strategy Division. This is a team of very creative people actually not me, but a, a team of creative people uh, that are focused on new technologies for the future of digital storage. Well, tell us why you are sponsoring OCP this year and part of the event. We, we're happy to have you, but we'd love to know the reason behind it. <laughs> okay, well, we, all of uh, Kyoksia are really excited to be a sponsor here at OCP this year. To us, OCP is an important event. It's got all the cloud and hyperscale data center uh, people involved. Uh, all of the attendees are exactly that group of developers and innovators that we want to meet and talk to. So for us, it's a great venue and a great show. We understand that you have a, a recent technology announcement about how Flash can be used in a new way by the open commute, compute community. So please tell us what that's all about. Yeah, it, it was actually uh, a, a long time coming, and we're very happy to have made this announcement uh, just late last week. Uh, we announced a new technology for the hyperscale, uh, and those hyperscalers that are looking to the future by redefining their use of solid state storage, i.e. flash. The announcement was for our software-enabled flash technology, or SEF. Uh, it's a new flash-native API for deploying in cloud and hyperscale environments. Uh, what we have seen, there is a need to maximize the potential of flash and cloud unique workloads and applications. And this announcement was about our new way to address those needs. Why does the OCB community need this new technology approach to using flash? Okay, well, hyperscalers, the open source community and the OCP community, uh, you know, in their redefining the use of flash are, are doing this quite often by building their own storage solutions. And what's needed in order to do that are tools that enable those developers to leverage the speed and flexibility of Flash with the ease of software definability. And this is the goal for SEF technology. So essentially, is this a building block technology targeted for those who make their own SSDs? Uh, in some ways, but actually we believe this represents a new category of storage where Flash by itself can bypass all of the legacy interfaces that are rooted in traditional HDD behaviors. Well, Ceph SCF is not just software, it is software enabled. It's an API, uh, Flash Native Semantics, uh, designed to accomplish a couple of very key things. Uh, first, use Flash in its native mode. Uh, let's get all the speed and flexibility that we can out of Flash. Let's fully enable direct host control of Flash via software. Uh, the API then can abstract the complexity of all of the low level Flash management to simplify the work of those developers. Uh, this abstraction also benefits uh, in the ways of managing generational changes of Flash. This way the developer won't have to change their code as, as Flash evolves with each new generation. This gives a real uh, advantage uh, and time to market as each new generation is uh, brought out to the market. It's a significant motivator. Um, now, in order to demonstrate all of this capability uh, and how to use SEF technology, we've been out modifying versions of regular block drivers. We've also developed a ZNS module. So from your building block comment, we can build quite a few different types of devices using this SEF technology. Uh, we've got Kuiper custom hyperscale FTL implemented, uh, and we're actively working all the way up to the application layer uh, by modifying uh, RocksDB and for virtualization Firecracker to show how real world applications can implement the SEF API. And in many cases, we'll make this code available as open source examples 
So developers can look at it and figure out uh, easily how to adapt to their own code to the SCF API. So with all of those wonderful features in mind, what challenges does this technology solve for the hyperscale data center? Uh, very good question. So we've talked to pretty much all of the hyperscalers uh, and uh, they all have different approaches, they got different applications, they got different businesses they're trying to solve, uh, and they all need to do so in different and unique ways to their own environments. Uh, at the same time, a lot of the problems they're trying to solve are very similar. Uh, latency is a big issue, uh, especially long tail latencies. Uh, use of DRAM in devices, device level power protection, device level RAID, in many cases, these problems need to be resolved and they need to do it from their point of view rather than from a common point of view. So the SEF API uh, creates this media-based system-centered approach. SEF technology will fundamentally redefine that relationship between the host and solid state storage. So this brings control of the media to the host, to the software, resolves all of these traditional overhead problems it couples purpose-built hardware with this flash native API, allowing uh, the API to leverage uh, existing in industry standards and protocols as needed. It will all be open source. Uh, the API will be open source, the sample codes will be open source, so it'll be very easy for everybody to pick up and use. And it gives host applications the complete or whatever level of control they need to manage their storage functionality. Basically, it maximizes all of the flexibility you can get from Flash for performance and speed and brings all of that Flash value to the developer. Scott, you call this a technology. So what is it actually? Hardware, software, or standards? Uh, you know, Laura, it, it's actually a bit of all three. Um, it consists of both hardware and software, and this hardware and software are working together. Uh, it's purpose-built hardware in the form of a controller with a range of capabilities that abstract the flash and offload all of the low-level flash management functions like program and erase, cell health, uh, timing. And that then is coupled with the API for programmers to implement flash anywhere in their stack up to and including the application itself. This approach also provides tools in the form of an SDK so that the software designer can focus on storage development rather than having to handle that low level flash complexity. The API itself will be open source. Anyone that is a developer or needs to develop uh, their application can pick it up and use it. And as we know, the industry needs multi-vendor solutions as an open source API, any flash vendor can build their flash to work within the API itself. We covered a lot of ground of, all about the excitement behind flash and what's happening at Kyoksha. Is there a key takeaway though that our audience should know about this new technology? Hmm. Uh, so software enabled flash as a technology, I think, fundamentally will redefine that relationship between host and solid state storage. We're looking for a really powerful way forward for flash to be deployed and used in hyperscale environments. We wanna shed that legacy HDD paradigm. We want flash to behave in much more predictable and uniform manners. This, this leads to better latency outcomes. Uh, we wanna use flash at its native speed and capabilities. And we believe this SEF technology is going to deliver all the tools that you, the developer, needs to adopt Flash at the speed of your software. I think, to put it really simply, SEF technology brings all of the software flexibility and scalability you need to the Flash. All right, there you have it. Scott, where can our viewers go to learn more about Flash in Kyokusha? I know we'll find you at the summit, but want to also see if there's a place online we can go. Yeah, well, first and foremost, at, at the virtual summit, uh, we do have a track uh, where we're going to spend a little bit of time talking in a lot more detail about what is the API and how does it work. This is on Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. The track is titled, Why Are You Still is Using Flash Like a Drive? Uh, at, this, um, at this talk, our chief architect will be there, and he'll be describing the core functions and capabilities of SAF in technical detail. 
Uh, and also our project's uh, senior vice president will be there and he'll talk about the business impact and value propositions of SEF technologies. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you want to go online right now and pick up what information is available online, you can go to softwareenabledflash.com. That's all one word, no spaces, softwareenabledflash.com. And we've got a fair amount of information up there already, including a white paper, a quick little video, and some other um, good consumable information about what is the technology and how does it work. Lots of great ways to connect. Well, thank you so much, Scott, for sharing today and, and spending some time with us. Laura, thank you very much. It was a great pleasure to be here and having chats to chat with you and talk to all of the uh, virtual OCP participants. Uh, it was fantastic. Thank you. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to OCP TV. Enjoy the virtual show.